The following podcast was produced in house for KQEK.com. After an extended break from podcasting, I'm back with another series of interviews, starting with Italian composer Fabio Fritzi, who discusses his working relationship with director Lucio Fulci, severe eye trauma in Zombie, his first film scores, restoring contraband for beat records, and his early years including a collaboration with members of Goblin. Edited extracts of this interview, originally conducted in October of 2014, originally appeared in Rue Morgue magazine. What follows is the complete discussion in which Fabio Fritzi discusses Fritzi to Fulci. The second year the composer mounted his tribute concert, this time at London's famous Barbican. There are rumors Fritzi may be coming to North America this fall, and maybe Toronto. So why not listen to some details of a concert you may hear live with your very own ears? In Halloween of 2013, it marked the first time that you performed in London. And first I wanted to know if there was something special about the experience which convinced you to return to London again in 2014. Uh, let's say that it was a an, an, really an exciting experience. Uh, it was the first time we went up abroad, I mean, with uh, Fritzi to Fulci. This was, as you know, uh, a project that I had in my mind since uh, seven, eight years. Obviously, when you, you sell uh, almost 900 uh, tickets, uh, you know that you will find uh, people over there, usually. But you, you don't know who will, will you meet and uh, the reactions and so. I can tell you that uh, when I was uh, on the stage at Union Chapel, I was uh, at home for me. I mean, I was really so comfortable. So with my band, uh, everybody of us was uh, really in a great shape and the reactions were uh, fantastic. So uh, I understood that um, maybe uh, this, this was the the best place where to begin something new, something uh, important. And uh, when uh, after some months uh, I knew that um, Barbican Theatre was interested in producing a, a new show for uh, 2014, uh, you can understand I was uh, so happy to say yes. Had you anticipated that there would be, in fact, be 900 tickets that would have been sold last year, or was it a pleasant surprise? No, um, last year we, we tried uh, just on uh, my name, you know, that we had uh, two basic partners in uh, in London, Heichmann, you know, from uh, Dead Waltzer recording, uh, Spencer, Spencer Heichmann, and uh, Painted Black. So we started the project and, and we put uh, the tickets uh, on sale. And uh, I can tell you that when they told me, Fabio, they are finished, I was uh, really, really sur- surprised because, you know, it was the first time in London, so I knew that we have uh, so many friends over there, people who knew very well my, my story, uh, who like my music, who are in a kind of a relationship with me, and I felt uh, there really personally. But, uh, you know, 900 person that buy a ticket for seeing you, it's not uh, an everyday story, I mean. I think you're right in describing it as a as a relationship because, you know, if, if you love an artist and if you love the artist's music, you do develop a relationship with it. And I think when there's a, a rare opportunity to hear that music in person, it's really special. And uh, I guess I'm, I'm not surprised that uh, that it sold out so fast. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I think that also Internet uh, is a, a, an help in, in these directions. I mean... Uh, uh, you, you don't speak uh, every day with everybody loves you in the, in the world. But uh, in a way, I'm sure that uh, also this kind of, uh, of uh, writing, of uh, posting, uh, and so people can uh, get to know you better than uh, we can think. I mean, uh, many person I met uh, in the after party in London uh, spoke to me in the way I suppose they could speak. I mean... Uh, uh, like like friends, like people who knew my story, but also who knew a little my person. And this is uh, really extraordinary. I mean, it's the net, uh, it's something that can uh, 
in a way can kill you but can also make you live uh, better really better I wonder if you can describe some of the emotional high points that you experienced in performing your music live last year especially since some of the music may not have been performed since the original scoring dates in uh, the isolated environment of a recording studio this was uh, the, the, the the emotions I, I as I told you before it's uh, something uh, v very new because uh, uh, Till uh, three years ago, I was uh, I was just almost always a, a composer uh, living in a, in a recording studio. Then yes, I I conducted a symphonic orchestra. I I made a lot of things uh, every day. Uh, I love to change my kind of working because I think uh, uh, it can be boring uh, doing always always the same thing in your field. But uh, so I, I wrote the ballet. I wrote everything. But uh, uh, my last band was uh, when I was uh, 20. So you can imagine that first uh, building up a, a band with musicians, not an orchestra. An orchestra is another thing. A band, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, it's uh, something uh, more uh, people that are more uh, nearer to you. You, you, you rehearse in another way. With the orchestra, you, we have uh, uh, some rehearsals, uh, uh, and then you go to the concert. With the band, uh, you, you must uh, grow up together a little bit, I mean, uh, for a while, and then uh, you share your project uh, in a different way. So uh, this was uh, absolutely new. New, I mean, uh, an, old, <laughs> an old memory that uh, became a new, a, a new re reality. So, uh, and then, uh, as everybody knows, uh, those musics, uh, those uh, themes, uh, those uh, scores uh, were not dead, but they were like in a, in a picture. I mean, they, they were uh, dead. You, you could hear, you could uh, um, cut, you could uh, hear people in the, in the world who, who use it for, uh, for, for, the, 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 for, for singing on or rapping on. But uh, that was. And uh, the, the, the operation to to make them uh, be live uh, to live uh, again, I mean, uh, was uh, really really strange. And also to put my my hands uh, on a music that I wrote uh, uh, the, the other I, I, can, I can say uh, my half life, you know, because I was uh, almost thirty. Now uh, now uh, now I am uh, uh, sixty three. So. And so um, it was really a, a, a very, very interesting uh, uh, work, a very emotional work. And then uh, when, you, when you say, for example, now when I, I can tell you that when uh, uh, Zombie 2 um, theme, uh, the title theme uh, in, in London was uh, with, uh, with the shark appearing and the people was uh, like crying, ah! Like this. No, it's, uh, it's uh, something that you, you cannot imagine because uh, the music is living in this, in this moment, people is uh, reacting in this moment uh, and so forth. Uh, as uh, um, the other thing I, I like so much when uh, at, uh, at the end I, I told after the first encore, I told, uh, but there is something that uh, I, I, we, we, it's, uh, it's still, uh, still missing. And everybody, the beyond, the beyond, <laughs> because I, I had the, the idea to, to take the beyond for, as uh, the last theme. And uh, everybody was so happy that uh, also the beyond was in the concert. I think part of the affection, I think part of the enjoyment that the fans undoubtedly had is that um, it's one thing to hear the music with the film. It's one thing to hear it separately on an album. But it's a completely different experience when you hear it. But at the same time, because it's coming directly from the composer, it's, it's amazing to actually hear your favorite parts in a song or in a theme live. Mm. It's, I mean, from a fan standpoint, it's a really exhilarating experience. Uh, yes, maybe because you know that uh, uh, there is a, uh, another, another work on, uh, on the themes. I mean, uh, you know that uh, if uh, the composer you, you love, the music you love uh, is uh, 
just prepared to to let you hear now it's something that like, like is a uh, supper is ready i mean you know <laughs> it's something that uh, it's done just for you and uh, and this was the message i wanted to give and also i will try to give uh, this year uh, again because uh, you know every time you have uh, an audience uh, uh, it's it's kind of uh, something different, you know, and uh, and and also when you prepare your concert, uh, you you prepare yourself uh, in a different way, and, and maybe uh, the, the person who is there to listen to you uh, can understand it and can appreciate it. For this year's concert, uh, are there any changes in the repertoire, and also are there any changes in the band makeup as well? No. Uh, the band is, uh, I think, it's perfect. Uh, they are so excited uh, to to come back to London. You can imagine. We had a, we had a problem in the last concert uh, a couple of, of uh, weeks ago in Tuno uh, near Roma. There was a uh, Italian horror fest, uh, and we and we performed the, the London concert, the the last. Uh, year concert and um, I had a problem with a guitarist, uh, electric guitarist who was uh, out of Italy so he couldn't play and I had to find uh, uh, another ex exceptional performer who was with us. But uh, for London the band is the same, the, the quartetto, the, the string quartet uh, would be always uh, allowed a quartet who was uh, with us uh, last year. Um, I am uh, I am uh, thinking uh, maybe something new, but uh, you know uh, I'm writing these days uh, the show. Uh, Barbican, it's a great partner. You, you can imagine it's a, a great place uh, of music and not only music. So they asked me to prepare everything together. I can I can anticipate to you that uh, there will be um, a tribute uh, to. The, the friendship that was born from between me, Claudio Simonetti, Fabio Pignatelli, and Massimo Morante before the birth of Goblin. Uh, some months ago, we recorded something together, and we signed every every song uh, written one by one by one, one by me, one by Claudio, and. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, I will uh, put up a, uh, a suite uh, dedicating this to this beautiful moment uh, uh, before um, birthing. I mean, I had done uh, maybe the, the first, uh, or maybe I was going to do the first uh, movie by myself. And, uh, and they, after some weeks, uh, would be called from Argento for the Profondo Rosso. It's a really, this is a really a, a shot, a, a picture of five friends uh, who work together for a, a, a terrible movie. <laughs> it was called, uh, uh, it was a sexy movie called uh, Giro Giro Tondo con il sesso è bello il mondo. Means uh, Giro Giro Tondo with the sex is beautiful, the world, the world is beautiful. Uh, from uh, Oscar Brazzi. But um, the movie was not important. It was important that we were together, we were beginning to write, uh, to find uh, ideas, uh, to enjoy, to enjoy our work. This is uh, something I, I, I sure, I, I told uh, last week, we, we, I, we met with Claudio Simonetti, and I told him, and he was really, <laughs> it was really happy for, of this idea. And uh, obviously, what, it will not be the only one, the only new. The idea is uh, to do a new show. I mean, uh, with um, many things, uh, many parts of uh, last year's show. But I think uh, that we will have three, four things uh, quite uh, spectacular. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about your first impressions of Lulcio Fulci and uh, your, the first two films that you, you did for him. Uh, one, I guess, was Four of the Apocalypse. And then the yeah. second one was a little scene horror comedy, which I guess its shorter title is Dracula in Brianza. Yes, in Dracula in Brianza. Il, which il I've never heard of. Costante Nicosia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Demoniaco means uh, from, from the devil, uh, or uh, 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 also known as Dracula in Brianza. Now, um, Fulci wasn't an easy person. I mean, <laughs> when you when you when we were younger, me, Franco and Vincenzo, Bixio, Frizzi and Tempera. Uh, we were uh, 
a trio just born and uh, we love to work together and uh, we had the, the opportunity to meet uh, this uh, director uh, as everybody knows uh, Lucio was uh, very well he was uh, also a pretty person it was uh, we laughed after enormously together but uh, you know as a director he, he was he had the, the clear ideas he, he knew what he wanted to do those two films are quite particular because they are so different from the ones uh, so loved um, about our collaboration i mean i quattro dell'apocalisse is something that is not an horror movie but you know it's something that uh, uh, gets along with the horror. I mean, it's a it's a very very strong movie, like Luca and Contrabandiere. Uh, there are movies uh, that are a western and a giallo, but they are Fulci movies uh, with uh, with uh, uh, um, an important concept, no? um, and hard scenes, uh, blood, and and so. The other one was uh, Dracula in Brianza. Was something very different. Uh, Talking with Antonella, Antonella, the, the daughter, Lucio daughter, uh, we, we, we often say that there was also in this movie a message, you know, because it was a message uh, speaking about the fact that um, a leader of a company was like, uh, like a person who uh, w wanted to drink the blood of his uh, collaborators. This was the idea, you know, that when uh, a manager gets to be the owner of the collaborators. And it was a comedy. Uh, Lando Buzanca uh, is an, an Italian actor. In this moment, was a uh, very popular t t TV shows, uh, other movies, and so. Um, obviously, two very different um, projects. Uh, everybody knows, that, who loves uh, Quattro dell'Apocalisse, knows that we had the opportunity to write a lot of songs. I, <laughs> I loved the this kind of music. Um, um, among uh, my heroes, uh, I had uh, Bob Dylan and uh, Simon and Garfunkel and uh, Crosby, Sid and Nash, and so. So for me, it was uh, really a, uh, a joy. The other was uh, more technical. Um, we wrote a song, uh, and uh, the comedy, you know, it's uh, as always uh, needed this, uh, the, a music who can make you laugh. And then we met. Um, uh, an old musician called uh, Franco Nebbia. Franco Nebbia, who was um, an Italian uh, composer of songs, a uh, good piano player, and uh, he, he was also a, um, okay, can, can you tell you, a comic. I mean, uh, he used to play roles in other movies. And I uh, loved him because I knew him in a radio show, listening to a radio show. So when I met him, he was uh, an important person for me, and he was a really a great uh, gentleman. Uh, and, we, and we worked also together in this movie. So very different things, very different from, from what we would have done after with Lucio. Um, among the many classic scenes that you've been involved with uh, in, in Fulci's films, especially those involving grievous physical trauma, like the gory scenes, uh, were they especially difficult to score? Because there are, there are some composers who are very sensitive to some of the details or some of the sort of the prolonged sadism that sometimes can appear in a horror scene. You know, um, sometimes you see, uh, you, you see, you see also today uh, a movie and you see something... Uh, something strange, something hard, and you say, what can I put on this? Lucio used to, he, he, he explained to you what he wanted the, the, the audience get from that scene. When, when you are asking me, I, I can see the, the, the scene of, uh, of a zombie, the, the eye with the, with the wood, no? the, 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 uh, Olga Carlato's eye. It was not easy because uh, it's something uh, really, <laughs> if you want, disgusting. No? And a piece of, of wood that gets into an eye. And I think maybe the, the worst thing <laughs> can happen to you. So uh, how, how, can you, how can you describe it? Uh, with, with, uh, sure, you cannot write a theme. So uh, maybe uh, an effect or something like this. In the end, 
uh, I decided to write something um, that uh, I got from a, a Beatles song um, as idea. Uh, maybe you remember, I'm sure you remember, uh, A Day in the Life. Um, a Day in the Life is a song written uh, one part from Paul McCartney and the other part from John Lennon. And uh, George Martin, the, the, the ranger and producer, did a, a link between two very different songs just to get the, the two songs in one. And he, he, he writes a, a, a staccato tum, 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 with, the, uh, with the, the strings uh, which uh, go high and higher in, uh, in the harmony and some effects uh, under. Uh, I, I took this idea uh, that I, I think was quite, uh, you know, a beating to, 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 um, and uh, creating something more, some lines of... Uh, of a cluster, some so it's it's something that I started from there, and I created a patchwork of sounds, and then we <laughs> we tried on the on the scene, and it works uh, worked very well. So, but with, you, you know, uh, every now and then you you have to do something out of the usual. Now, if you have to comment with the music a kiss, it's easy. Normally, it's quite easy. Something like this is not the, uh, every time you have to find an idea. Mm -hmm. And then further beyond, because it has such an unusual structure, was it difficult to find a, a central theme for the film? No, Beyond uh, Beyond was a, a very um, a very complex uh, movie. Uh, in this case, I had the opportunity to to get offer uh, often on the on the on the stage. I mean, when they were uh, sh shooting the the movie, so. <clears throat> Maybe is one of of the Fulci films who, that I got to know better, and uh, I, I can I can tell you that um, it was a moment of a very mature uh, way of working together, and I, I knew Lucio's uh, tastes quite well, and I wanted to do something very rich. I had also a, a good. Uh, a ranger in this in this kind in this kind of work it was uh, um, Giacomo dell'Orso, a, a good uh, string arranger and so, and then uh, the idea of of the cum resurgit creatura, uh, the 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 idea was very strong to go to the other side of the um, of the of, of life uh, of the frame so. Uh, we needed something very, very loud, very, very important, very classical, and so. But um, another thing that uh, I'm in love with, still loving with, with is the, the Emily theme, because uh, I, I got to know her. We we stayed together in the in the studio while uh, where they were shooting, and so. And Lucio told me. You, you see this, that piano, I would like something, an idea that comes from this. And I, and I was there and I, I sang a couple of notes from this old piano that was in, on, the, on the scene. And, uh, and then I, I went back home and sometimes now when I listen to the, the, the Emily theme, I wonder how this idea could uh, come to my head. But maybe, you know, when you are flashed from... Uh, uh, a situation uh, you go and you uh, with, with an instinct uh, you, you can create uh, something were there any kinds of uh, music or any kind or any kind of uh, specific types of music or instruments that Fulci did not like because I know that there are some directors who are very particular about certain sounds that they want to hear and ones that they definitely don't like Lucio you should, knew very well music. I mean, he had the work with uh, also singers and writer in Italia. Uh, he had played. Uh, he told me that play, he played some jazz with trumpets. And so I think that the thing that Lucio didn't want was uh, to be. I don't know if, if I'm correct in English. The banality. I mean, the mm -hmm. something something not. Uh, uh, he, he wanted something. Uh, a, a research. I mean, uh, something that you, not the first thing you 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 you, you find. Uh, you, you wanted uh, a work, uh, working on. Uh, then uh, it was not uh, so difficult about sound. So you, 
You know, maybe I told you last year that uh, there was uh, just one time he didn't like a theme. It was uh, the the theme that I, I wrote for uh, Paura, Paura nella città dei morti viventi. In this kind, in this, uh, in this uh, situation, he wanted for the main title, the, you know, the beginning with the symmetry, uh, and, and so he probably wanted something very, very hard, like now is, I mean, like he put after. And, but I had written, I had written a, a theme more uh, uh, romantic because I, that was my, my idea. I, I, in the early morning, this symmetry, uh, um, su subjective, uh, you, you see, but, but it's something quite, uh, quite beautiful, I mean. I, he didn't like, he was so angry with me that day. So, but I don't know why now I play it in my concert and everyone likes, and maybe he would like, like to, uh, if, uh, have, have listen uh, nowadays. But you know, he was very instinctive. So if uh, you, 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 you could see this, the, that the music uh, get together with, with the, his scene, it was okay. It was okay, no problem at all. The next question I want to ask is in regards to, uh, of all the instruments that you've used, uh, is there any particular one that you find, that you found to be the most versatile, especially in horror? Because, um, you know, you've used strings, you've used synthesizers, and, uh, you know, if I recall, I think it was uh, a couple of years ago, you were also in a documentary on the Mellotron, which is one of the strangest, most fascinating instruments I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, uh, everything uh, uh, is, uh, is, is built for something. Uh, Mellotron, uh, when, I, when I was uh, 23, 24, when I began working on uh, movies and so, uh, Mellotron and other instruments like uh, sitar and so were instruments used by our loved band. I mean, uh, Beatles, uh, Stones and so. So uh, when the first time I had to to do the that voices, uh, the idea uh, fall uh, fall on on Mellotron, and uh, now you know the great idea of Mellotron was that you could uh, use a real sound in a uh, recorded some way, and that you could, could uh, play with with, with, a, with a keyboard. And th this was uh, for us, uh, you, you cannot imagine nowadays, because uh, nowadays everything is uh, quite easy. I mean, uh, you, you have uh, sounds incredible that you can play with the keyboards. In, in that moment, everything was uh, very hard. So this, uh, that thing was, uh, uh, it, 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 um, uh, was fascinating for us you know, to, to, to get this possibility. So, for example, uh, in, uh, in, in the tribute to Goblin and me that I will do, there is a, a solo done with a flute uh, in a song that I wrote um, called Edda, which is not with the real flute, but with the flute of Mellotron, because it's uh, uh, something magic, you know, like this. No, but, uh, uh, my instrument, my basic instrument is guitar. So many themes uh, of, from there uh, came fr from uh, from guitar, from arpeggios that I, that I love to do. Second one was piano, as uh, you can imagine. So, but uh, like, uh, and, uh, there is one thing that I wanted to tell about this. Uh, Last week we were rehearsing with the Fritti Tufucci band, and uh, the, the Federico, the, the drummer, the younger, came to me and told me, but you know that uh, more and more I listen to the, your arrangement, and uh, the bass, the bass line is uh, always so interesting. And, uh, and I told him, you know why? Because uh, I was working with Fabio Pignatelli, and Fabio was my friend, and he was so a great bass drum, bass uh, player. So we we always uh, were looking for an idea, a second bass, and, and something like this. So in you see, uh, instrument yes, but also the person who, who played the instrument.
And then uh, I wonder if we can just briefly touch upon Zombie, just in terms of its uh, main theme, because um, I know it's also very beloved by fans, and uh, I guess it's it's a bit unconventional, perhaps, to, to for today's audiences, where you might score a, a scene uh, of horror using uh, you know rock music or heavy synthesizers or orchestral, but uh, the the fact that the score does have moments where there's a dance beat, I find, is really unusual. <laughs> really and and it, it also feels very tongue in cheek because I, I I imagine that Fulci had a good sense of humor and he must have known that <laughs> Zombie is 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 quite an insane film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Now we, you know, uh, as I told you before, it's uh, something like sometimes you when you cook when you when you do a uh, when you we go in the kitchen and and you work for your friends. Uh, to, to let you, them eat something tonight. And you, you, you go trying uh, to put something together, maybe unconventional, no? because, uh, and sometimes, sometimes you can find uh, a really interesting flavor, um, uh, uh, taste that you, for the first time you get, no? and so you can say, this is my recipe. recipe no? uh, I think that uh, there are moments also in, uh, in film uh, scoring or in, in uh, Film uh, shooting that you are uh, that you link things uh, and they get to, along uh, together very well. So uh, the, the the situation goes uh, goes beyond the the, the real uh, meaning and gives you something uh, something more. In fact, uh, for example, the end of, of zombie with the, the zombies going uh, towards New York with that music and so uh, maybe it could be. Quite a quite laugh, a laughing thing, but everybody is on is uh, is sit on on his seat and is uh, telling Mamma Mia what kind of things uh, would be happen now, no? So it's, a, it's a, according to me there is always uh, something magic when you put together strange things. And then two. Uh... Two final questions. Uh, yeah. One is just in regards to uh, unreleased scores. Um, is, is there a chance that maybe Dracula in Brianza and uh, Contraband might be released either as individual scores or perhaps uh, from surviving music and sound effects mixes? Because I know that, that that was done with a couple of uh, Goblin scores. Yeah, uh, I, I don't like uh, uh, this kind of uh, project. I mean, uh, I don't like when somebody takes... Uh, um, music and effects, and so, so I think that uh, if uh, the music is lost, is lost. I can rebuild, obviously, because uh, and sometimes uh, I have the temptation to do it in certain situation. But I can tell you, quite officially, that in the in the table of my room in Roma, and I, I'm not in Roma, there are two old um, tapes with the. the uh, look at the Contrabandiere score. We have to work on it because they are quite old, but I think that uh, in next uh, year, I think 2015, we will be able to put it on for, for the first time completely on a vinyl and on a CD. I'm quite proud of this because I found a copy and, uh, and it sounds uh, great, but it must be, you know, you know sometimes that the, when the when the tapes are old, you have to to cook them and so and so. But I think that we will uh, with that we can have it uh, in a in a while, in a little time. No, that's wonderful news. I'm glad that the tapes are in good condition because um, yeah. I've heard stories where they had to they had to bake the tapes and then they literally had maybe one or two playbacks maximum before the tape just literally just turned to to, to goo. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, now you know I, I I I tried to to download uh, some years ago. I didn't know the, the new process uh, like cooking and so. And I had something very, and uh, so I didn't like. It. No, the themes are, are so so beautiful. Uh, also the song, you know, the the song the, from uh, cricket. But I think that we can find something good now. I think the Daniele De Gemini from Beat Record is uh, quite happy uh, about it, that thing, and I think that will uh, work. And and then we have also, I can tell you, a couple of. Uh, remastering that we are doing uh, of other old products that are uh, on uh, on the market since uh, since then 
but I think that bit record will tell very soon. Mm -hmm. And then my last question is just whether, because Fritzi de Fulci is being presented again by Paint It Black, will there be a concert album or a DVD either of the 2013 or 24 performances or perhaps both? Uh, I can I can tell you that uh, in uh, I think September October in a couple of months uh, maybe just uh, before uh, London uh, gig uh, we will have uh, the double album uh, in CD and uh, I'm sure that we will have at uh, the beginning of New Year uh, also the vinyl uh, we did uh, a complete recording of a video from uh, Union Chapel but you know Union Chapel. It's got a particular lighting. I mean, it's very not so so much light. Uh, they have a, a style. So my co cooperator says that maybe a total video of the concert could be uh, not uh, not perfect uh, for uh, also if I would like to. Eh? But uh, I must also listen to technical people. But sure, the the the, the music uh, is it's ready. It's great. I can tell you. I'm quite proud of this, uh, and uh, and I think it would be the great news of uh, next month. Wonderful. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing for it. Uh, given the fact Thank that I'm much. trapped in Toronto and can't come to London, it'll be nice to hear it on album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that uh, we have uh, we, we had to to come uh, in, uh, in in the states and maybe in uh, Canada, then uh, in in September in a few days. But uh, then we have to change. Uh, our minds because uh, the, the times were too close, but I really hope to come uh, there, you know, and have so many friends and people uh, and I would like to, 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 to come and play in, in the States and in Canada. I really hope uh, next year. Special thanks to Fabio Fritzi for sharing his thoughts on his career, Stuart Kirkham at Fifth Avenue PR, and Rumorg's Aaron Von Lupton. Music from the first concert, Fritzi de Fulci, live at Union Chapel, and the premiere release of Contraband are available from Italy's Beat Record Company. Coming next, an interview with Terence P. Minog, arranger, orchestrator, and composer of the cult film Roar, recently reviewed at kqek.com during the film's theatrical run at Toronto's Royal Cinema. If you like this podcast please visit kqek.com's Facebook page and follow our Twitter feed at mondomark underscore kqek. All podcasts are available via Libsyn, iTunes, and YouTube. The editorial skills responsible for this podcast are also available for hire. If you require audio editing, mixing, and cleaning up interview recordings prior to publication, Please visit mondomark.com for more info and to hear demo reels. Until next time, this is Mark R. Hassan, editor of kqek.com. This podcast is copyrighted 2015 by Mark R. Hassan.